Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome. You're listening to Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. We're so glad you could join us. But before we get into the Word, let us take a moment and pray. Lord, we just thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives, Lord. We just thank you that you're always present, Lord, and that you always have the right answer, Lord, and that you always know what's right to do, Lord. Lord, we also just thank you that we have the same opportunity, Lord, to exemplify you, Lord, in this earth, Lord, and to show your characteristics, Lord, and your nature to those around us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In amen. Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. We are glad to have you with us as we continue our study and discussion of the Word in the book of Acts. We are continuing and are in Acts 26, and we're going over verses 1 through 25, continuing our discussion on that section of Scripture. So I want to encourage you at this time, if it's your first time joining us, or if you just want to refresh yourself on that section of Scripture, mm-hmm. to pause the episode at this time. And just take that time and opportunity to read through and get familiar or reacquainted with, with what's being said there and just make things easier to follow along in the discussion. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. And at this time, the floor is open for each of you to share what Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you and to ask any questions that you have. So who would like to begin? I will. All right, Layla. And so the other thing that the Lord had showed me, back to looking at Paul, verses um, 20 through 22, and this is Paul after he's, he was converted, and he's telling Agrippa what he's doing and that he was telling the, the people in uh, Jerusalem and Judea and all the other places that he's already visited that they should repent, turn to God and do works of um, befitting repentance. And then he's saying for the for that reason for Paul preaching this to Gentiles and preaching this message, the Jews seized them, seized him in the temple and tried to kill him. And then he says that he obtained help from God and to this day stands as witness, both to small and great, saying no other things than those which the prophets and Moses said would come. So the words that the Lord had already spoken through his prophets. And it just shows a a contrast and as we you were mentioning mommy in the last devotional about the words coming out of their mouths and the actions that they're doing and we've made this um observation multiple times already that the jews thought they were doing god a favor by killing them they were violating the ten commandments the torah to then punish somebody who they thought was um violating the ten commandments in the torah and <laughs> mm-hmm. And Paul was saying that his help came from God. So he's acknowledging where his true help came from. He didn't go, Mm -hmm. I, Paul, because I'm such a great orator and I'm so eloquent in speech and mighty in works and deeds. Mm -hmm. And because my name is Paul and I'm just that awesome that I'm standing here today. But he acknowledges that it was the grace of God that helped him um, through this process because by himself, Paul would have been killed. He would have been uh, annihilated a long time ago. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's how we should be viewing ourselves today as well, acknowledging that we where we are today, the, the good success that we've had in our lives only came because God was with us and he was working with us. We see, um, I believe it's in Numbers, when the Lord said, don't say to yourself, my right arm has gained these riches for me. When you are satisfied and you've been brought into the land that he promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, don't mm-hmm. say that I've obtained this of myself, mm-hmm. lest you fall and be Mm -hmm. destroyed and that's how we should be today not to get arrogant as we have good success and forget the covenant of our god and forget the good things that he's done for us because truly from my own experience i only experienced good because of him anytime i put my hands on something the whatever i was putting my hands on no longer existed because i broke it Mm -hmm. absolutely Yes, that, that is Deuteronomy that tells us not to forget the Lord our God. Um, 
And I mean, he says that multiple times. <laughs> Throughout the entirety of scripture, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of examples to go off of, but mm -hmm. that is a good one. Mm -hmm. And that, you can find that in Deuteronomy chapter 8, at least one account. Mm -hmm. uh, Promise, did you have something you wanted to say, my love? I saw your hand waving. Yes, mommy. Well, okay. Let's hear it, sir. And as Sela said that Paul had to, that was the Lord doing all these things and helping Paul, the Lord first reminded me of Galatians 5, where it talks about the fruits of the Spirit and how Paul had to be, when he was answering, when he's talking to Agrippa and Festus, he had to be talking inside the love of God. Mm -hmm. And you can see it described inside of Corinthians one thirteen. Mm -hmm. And the Lord showed me that the reason why Paul had to be discussed talking in the love of God was because um, I believe John talks about how that God was love and that if we have anything other than love for someone, then we're unable to actually allow the Lord to be spoken as in having everything that the Lord has for us be spoken because we're speaking, we'll be speaking out the flesh and I believe Layla talked about this, how Paul was a good speaker and how the Lord showed me that Paul could have been a good speaker, but if he, if he was answering angrily and being nasty, then he won't have been able to do exactly what the Lord wanted him to do. So James says the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God and that it on face value is accurate. And it also gives us insight to God's character and his nature that the carnal flesh can't produce God results. I mean, you can look through all of scripture and validate that. Uh, when Sarah tried to give Hagar to Abraham, that was a carnal thought in an attempt to bring forth the righteous plan of God. The son of promise was not given that way. It came through the way that God set up through the spiritual method of by faith, receiving strength. So the concept and the truth of how the kingdom of God works is found within that verse as well. The wrath of man cannot produce the righteousness of God. So um, think about Moses. Remember when the Lord told him to speak to the rock and he took his uh, rod out and started hitting the rock, mm -hmm. striking the rock. Well, the first time God told him to strike the rock, but the second time he said, speak to it. So while Moses had instruction from the Lord, correct? Yes. Because of his carnality in that sense and his fleshly behaviors, he corrupted and tainted what God was trying to do. And actually, he didn't hinder God from moving. He hindered his reward from being bestowed on him. He moved himself out of position to receive the fullness of the blessing. No, he didn't lose his life. So, you know, thank God for that, for his mercy there. But it cost him the ability to step his foot into the promised land. He only, he was relegated to only seeing it with his eyes. Now, thank God, again, he was welcome to go home with the father after that. But it had a consequence. And that it was heart, I'll say heart-wrenching, for Moses, because he talked a good deal about that, you people. Y'all caused me not to be able to go into the promised land. <laughs> go back and read Deuteronomy when he's re-instructing them. How many times he says that, and because of you. <laughs> he was angry with me because of you. Blaming your them fault. for his carnal actions when he was supposed to restrain himself. Self-control is the other. Uh, one of the other fruits of the Spirit. Not just love, but the self-control that goes with it. And the faithfulness to God. The gentleness. Right? Yes. So, all of those things have to be um, in the front of our minds to walk in them. No, we can't conjure them up for ourselves because all we have are um, less than <laughs> carnal duplicates uh, or counterfeits to that. We put nice in the place of kind and, and, the, and the like when God is not talking about that, but he's saying, put your flesh under, keep it subdued and don't allow it to arise at any point. Walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So God can still get his purpose. He'll drive right on around you and do what he's going to do. <laughs> but you miss out when you depart from the way that he set forth, the path that he put in, in front of your feet to walk down. I love that you brought that up, especially the self-control part, right? Mm -hmm. Let's bring it back to, to Acts here. Um, we're going to make some, I'll say, mm -hmm. contrast comparisons, if you will. Mm hmm so self-control, yes, is absolutely a fruit of the Spirit. 
and we have to submit to the Lord in that, right? His leading. Mm -hmm. You see here in Paul's testimony, he talks about what he was doing, thinking he was doing the will of the Lord. He was traveling to the ends of the earth to persecute innocent people. So where is the self-control in that? Mm -hmm. So even in, you brought up Moses, which I, I love, right? There's the element aspect of, oh, in love, right? Mm -hmm. There's Correction is a part of love. Absolutely. Discipline, Admonishment, absolutely. rebuke is also or can be a part of love, mm -hmm. right? Restraint can be a part of love. As in restraining your children and to, right and all those other things, mm -hmm, absolutely. Because there, there's the opposite; You're, it's still part of the teaching, of teaching them how they should behave, as opposed to rewarding bad behavior, right? Or teaching them that there's no consequence for their actions. The Lord disciplines those whom He loves, and if one is not disciplined, He's not a son or a daughter. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I want to bring this up because even in and no doubt people will. I'll say, throw out sections of scripture, or if you will, cherry pick certain sections of scripture. Mm -hmm. Well, well, Jesus fashioned a, a whip out of cords and drove and flipped over the, the tables and drove out the money changers. And okay, but it did also, he did that as he was led. It does not say that he just whipped them endlessly <laughs> and tore the flesh off their backs and all that, right? And, and, or whipped them every day. He said that he went to the synagogue daily. Daily, yes. To, to preach the word or to speak with the people. So he only did it this one time because that's what the father said. Now, this is my judgment. My, I want this to happen. Not, and I don't mean judgment as a do, 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 the thunder lightning that everybody thinks that that's not <laughs> what I'm saying. He's saying, this is my plan, my decision. This is what I want to happen. Right. I'm disciplining my children. Not, he, because he would have had to do that every day. If it was carnal, he saw those same money changers. He walked by them since right. he was a child. Or even with Elijah calling down fire mm -hmm. on the, the captain and his 50 men. Mm -hmm. That happened twice as the Lord led him. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it even, how do we know that? Because it even says about the third one that he was told, no, he was told by the Lord, go, go with this one. Don't mm -hmm. be afraid of him. Don't mm -hmm. be afraid. Go with them. Mm -hmm. and so in any and everything, we see that, we yes, we have to exhibit the, the fruit of the spirit known as self-control mm -hmm. but it also comes as a result of remaining with the lord not just okay lord i've got the clearance and then we take it to a whole different level and mm -hmm. we're now we're operating out of our flesh right off of the word that the lord gave us Amen. You know, there's a remaining that has to happen. Amen. And Paul talks to the Galatians. He calls. He says, "Oh, foolish Galatians, who's bewitched you? Mm -hmm. That which is begun in, was begun in the spirit is now being made perfect by your flesh." Really? Absolutely not. <laughs> he's like, get out of here with that. You know, that's a that's the Kamisha version. Um, but he's saying that doesn't make sense. If it started in the spirit and it's been um, ordained by God, it has to be finished and carried out by God. And remaining in alignment with the spiritual um, nature and the spiritual walk. Amen. Promise you still had something, baby? Yes. And Mommy, as you had said, and Deji also said this as well, that Paul had to have self-control in both, both all the times that Paul was speaking. And how most times Christians, and especially people, when they're being talked to, they usually become indignant and think that's righteous indigna indignation. And the Lord was showing me that there was a main difference between that. And first, he reminded me of um, Proverbs 1, 8 through 19. I'm not going to read it for the sake of time, but it basically talks about how the people are plotting to do evil. Mm -hmm. And how, while it may not seem like you're pl plotting to do evil... You'd still be doing evil if you're not following with the Lord's commandment. You can see the Lord's commandment inside of Matt through all the all the gospels when he said the greatest commandment was loving the Lord your God with all your soul, might and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. It then if you'll flip with me, I am gonna read this one because it's short. <laughs> to okay. uh James five seventeen through eighteen. 
where it says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Mm-hmm. And you can see here, there wasn't Elijah trying to do his own thing and saying, Lord, Lord, you've had enough grace on these people. I'm going to do it my own myself and mm-hmm. tell the Lord to do something. He was act fully listening to the Lord, and mm-hmm. as a result, whatever the Lord had said hap- through Elijah happened. Amen. Well, how do you know that? I want us to discuss this so everyone can understand. Because it doesn't state that specifically, right? That he sought the Lord and the Lord told him, pray that there's no rain. Right? Yes. So, yes. But how do we know? If, oh. What was Elijah? He was a prophet. Okay. What is a prophet? They declare the words of the Lord. Okay. They're the mouthpiece of, the, are Lord. The, mouthpiece of the Lord. Their role, their function is to speak what the Lord has given them to speak. That's what they are to declare. Not what they concoct or think in their mind, Mm -hmm. but what the Lord says, so that there can be impact, change, right? All those things that would draw people back to the Lord, right? Yes. Look throughout all all the prophets. It's always how they function. So while it doesn't necessarily say, well, the Lord told Elijah to pray that there's no rain. We know that that's the case because that is the role and function of a prophet that is rightly operating. Not a false prophet. Like Balaam. There's no question that Elijah, uh, there's no debate whether Elijah was a true prophet of God or he was a false prophet. None. So him being a true prophet of the Lord, clearly used, also used mightily, we, it is a given that he would have received his instructions from the Lord, that he did what the Lord commanded him to do, what to say and what to do, how to say it and when to say it and do it. So just so everybody is... On the same page. Mm-hmm. And as you go back and read through um, uh, 1 Kings 17 and the accounts where Elijah, look at it, all the places where the Lord said, where the Lord said, where the Lord said, the Lord said, Amen. the Lord said, I have commanded, the Lord said, et cetera, et cetera. That's so always it's there. His, his response. Right. But it's exactly, but it's always, it's included that God is the one who is leading this shindig, if you will, that the Lord is leading this, not Elijah doing it himself. Don't purely look at the order that it appears on the page, because did we initiate God or did he initiate us? He initiated us. The pride of life will say, I get to command God and I'm going to tell him what to do and he's going to be that genie in the bottle. No, no, no. But that's not the case. God ordained this. And just because it doesn't appear specifically on the page in that chronological order, much like the gospels aren't necessarily chronological and how they're um, they appear in the Bible or exactly how they're written we know it initiates with God first because without him we can do nothing right he yes. stated that very plainly okay so neither could Elijah and so the point James was making as well is James that Elijah wasn't special in regard to he's a more important more loved person God loves us equally and if we're moving and operating in what the Father tells us to do, then the Lord will um, keep his own word, right? Amen. Yes. Amen. And, and let's, I'll say back that up with yet another account. What did Moses say to Joshua? Why are you jealous for my sake, given Moses being a prophet of the Lord and the leader of Israel? What did Moses then say? I wish everybody were like me. I wish that they all would prophesy, that they all would hear from the Lord for themselves and speak or and or do what the Lord is giving and commanding them to speak and do mm-hmm. in the same manner. That's for everyone. Mm-hmm. I, I wish that they all would. So you have that opportunity as well. It doesn't mean you're, you may function in the office of a prophet, but it means that you're not excluded from hearing the voice of the Lord for yourself, and that you also have opportunity to speak, to declare, and to do the things 
that the Lord has predestined for you to do at the appropriate time and how or in the appropriate manner and way which he wants them spoken and or carried out, fulfilled. So that's for all of us, but that only comes as a result of remaining in step with the Lord, with Holy Spirit's leading. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, I know there's a lot in there for today, so let's pause. And with that, can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we thank you for this time that we had together in the Word this morning, Lord, and we thank you for providing us with all the things that we need, Lord, for our spirit, souls, and bodies, Lord. We ask your blessing upon us as we go to school and go to work, Lord, and do the things that you have for us to do, God. We thank you for your grace and your favor, your mercy and your compassion that covers us, God, and we just thank you for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Well, we love you, God bless you, and have a wonderful day. Want to know more about a day of prayer? Sign up for our newsletter where you'll get the latest updates on the ministry, inspiring messages, and coupon codes for the merch shop. Visit our website, adayofprayer.org, click on Connect in the menu bar, and complete the form. Be sure to check the box that says Subscribe. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, Take care and God bless you.